Welcome back. Hit subscribe, ring the bell, and follow me at DirtleMTG on Twitter to keep up to date with the most recent videos and other posts. You can help support this content by hitting like and share, and by checking out the links in the description below. Alright, it's time to dirtle. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Why Though, where I try to answer the question why cards should maybe be used more in Commander, or in some cases, maybe used less. Today I'm looking at a card that was very, very good back in the day, but with the making of newer cards has fallen a bit behind. The card today is Weathered Wayfarer. Let's go ahead and read the card. This is a 1-1 creature that costs a single white mana to cast. The card itself has one ability, and it reads, White, tap, search your library for a land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle. Activate only if an opponent controls more lands than you do. I do want to mention here that in case you caught it, I am using the newest oracle text for the card, while the card on screen is from the 9th edition core set. The function of the card is unaffected. I'm going to be frank here, there are a number of great one drops that you can start the game with in Commander, even in or for mono white. Soul Ring, Wayfarer's Bobble, and especially the excellent Esper Sentinel are good ways to start the game off. However, there isn't a large field of competition for that one drop slot in mono white. As you add colors, this becomes greater, but for decks that are white-blue, red-white, or white-black, this card can still be very, very useful. Let's go ahead and focus on this card's spot in those decks. At one mana, you get a body onto the battlefield. A game of Commander can be a game of inches, and having something down early to attack might make all the difference in the end, depending on what the deck does and what the Wayfarer is used for generally. No one is uh, really going to play this for that stat line though. Its ability is what makes this card worthy of inclusion in any deck that needs it. For a single white mana and a tap, we can search our library for any land card we want. This is what sets Wayfarer apart from other white cards that can get lands from your deck. Those other cards often have the restriction of a card being a plains type of land or a basic land type in some rare instances. The Wayfarer lets us get utility lands and mana fixing lands outside of things like Godless Shrine or Mistville Plains. We can get Cabal Coffers, Core Haven, Glacial Chasm, Celestial Colonnade, among others. While this ability still has the requirement that an opponent has more lands than you, this isn't something that is that hard to have happen most of the time, uh, especially in Mono White. A personal favorite target of mine for the Wayfarer is a Lotus Field. After I get that land, I play it, sacrifice two other lands, and keep the Wayfarer's ability relevant all while having a protected mana source. There is one other thing about the ability that may be viable in some decks, especially ones that care about the top few cards of the deck. The ability not only can repeatedly thin the deck for you, but it also shuffles the deck. This is probably the least relevant part of the ability for most players. Granted, it will be. But having an opportunity to change up what you're going to draw into in certain decks is an amazing ability to have that on hand and ready to go. That brings up something the other land search abilities can't do even in other colors very often. This is a cheap, repeatable ability. If you know someone will target your Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, grab a preemptive Thespian Stage or Vesuva and make sure your position is secure. Does someone like blowing up lands with Terestodon? This can help you recover some ground, pun intended. The fact that this isn't one and done like Tithe or Knight of the White Orchid offsets the drawbacks of the ability, and it needs no real outside manipulation or help to keep going. The last thing I want to cover is something I neglected to mention before, and that is the body. While this term usually refers to the power and toughness of the card, there are also the creature types to consider. This particular card has two very relevant creature types with Human and Cleric, which oddly enough, coupled with this ability, will often help those decks in Commander. Humans have been on the rise as a tribe since the original Innistrad, and have received a lot of support since then. Outside of generic support artifacts and enchantments, human-specific cards like Catilda, the Dawnheart Prime, and Kylo Sagardian Emissary in recent sets have helped push human tribal well into Commander viability. These decks love humans hitting the battlefield, and might love the Wayfarer that can search up a Galvany Township, Path to Ancestry, or Cavern of Souls. Likewise, clerics have been a decent tribe since the older framed cards from the Scourge and Onslaught sets, but have been getting a number of powerful additions to the tribe over the years, especially recently. These types of creatures often revolve around white and black as their core colors, like the old cleric Edgewalker, and that means Wayfarer is even better to include in these decks to grab some of those utility lands. Cavern of Souls again is a good way to protect your tribal based deck, just like in humans, and you can use clerics as a resource with Phyrexian Tower. You can also grab Vault of the Archangel for greater combat effectiveness, or Hall of Heliod's Generosity if you need some enchantment recursion. 
The cleric typing on Wayfarer also helps with the newer mechanic of party, which, while it can be 5 color, has recently centered around the white and black pre-constructed commander deck called Party Time. Of course, this also means it counts towards the party and grabs you those relevant lands while doing so. All of this said and done though, I do have to admit while the upside to using Wayfarer is a good one, there are also drawbacks. It can be slow, and getting it in the late game can be, yeah, not the best. Still, where it is useful, it can shine and be an important on-ramp to get your strategy going. Very few other cards outside green can let you get the land you want when you need it repeatedly. Having that in white, where it can offer to change the tide of a game, is really too good to pass on. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Why Though. Hopefully I answered that question for the Weathered Wayfarer, even if it doesn't have a home everywhere. If you have a card you want me to cover in the series, let me know in the comments below. I do read the comments, so a card you suggest may make it into a video. Liking this video also helps support the channel, and subscribing and hitting that bell keep you up to date on new posts. Until next time, don't miss a land drop.